So let's say you've been uploading videos on YouTube. You're trying to build your brand, you're trying to build out your channel, but not much is moving. And you can't figure out why you're uploading this content and you're just not getting the subscribers and the views that you want. So what gives? Well, in this video, I wanna share what you can do, a couple key strategies, three in particular, you can start doing right now if your channel growth is stuck. And you really wanna to get to that first 1,000 subscriber mark as soon as possible. What's up guys, Alex Hine, author of the book, Master the Day. Now I've included the first link in the description is a beta waitlist for my brand new business course coming out in a month. So we're gonna be talking about how I've actually managed to build a six figure brand by using YouTube and if you're interested, the first link in the description is the waitlist for this new course. So you can check it out, download the free 30-minute podcast on how to build a business and life you love. But if you want to be notified of the premium course, add your name to the list below. So step one is really the blue sky brainstorming about your topic, right? So at the end of the day, let's say you're at 20 subscribers, 10 subscribers, or you haven't even launched yet. What do you really build your brand about? Right, because there are people who upload topics on what they love, and there's people who upload on topics they know the audience wants to hear more about. But ultimately, to have a successful channel, you have to have both. The intersection between what you like and what other people want. You know, when it came to building my channel, I've done both. So I got to 100,000 subscribers by creating content on a specific topic, which was really fitness and weight loss, because that's what my brand was about. But then around 100,000 subscribers, I rebranded because I wanted to move more in the direction of what I love, which is personal development and personal growth. Because it was only in that that I could actually share more of my personal stories on how I've coached people and how I've reinvented my own life. So what I would suggest is two key questions. The first question is really what do you love to talk about and what are you really deeply interested in or deeply interested in becoming good at. Because I say that more than anything, your love of the topic, your passion, your drive to get good at it or figure it out, that's gonna draw in other people. Like all day long, you can create videos on crap that you don't care about, but that's not gonna work in the long run. That's not a sustainable strategy because you can only do something for so long that you don't really love. So when it comes to the topic, think about things like, Number one, what excites you? Number two, what is more niche? So for example, you could be talking about fitness and diet, but if you start talking about gluten-free dieting, or fitness with digestive problems, or fitness for women, or fitness for women over 40, every single one of those niches, every time you niche down, your chances of success are gonna go way up. So if there's something that obviously you feel like, oh, that could be me, that's a good place to start. The last thing to consider is what gap isn't being filled. So for example, if you think everyone's talking about fitness, but no one's talking about fitness with this health problem, fill that gap. And the last question is, what do you wish a YouTuber would do? You know, for me, one thing I wished YouTubers do would do was actually be honest. Like I wish they would just give real talk, not this bullshit I see so much on the internet, so that's the gap I filled. I give the real talk on personal growth. I don't talk about the peace and light, the love and the rainbows. I talk about how much it sucks and how much you just got to do the work because that's real. That's what all the successful people really think and really feel and they aren't sharing. Now the second thing is coming up with your certain content archetypes and your signature style. There are a lot of different ways to go about presenting the exact same topic. For example, look at two of the big YouTubers in the health uh, the men's style and the men's, the men's lifestyle space. You've got Aaron Marino, and his communication style is very blunt, very high energy, minimal editing, just like very in your face. And his titles are really just like tabloid headlines. That's his style. Now that's different from 
Antonio Centeno over at Real Men Real Style. Antonio style is very, uh, it's very prescriptive, more teaching. It's less personal. It's very like three ways to do that, five ways to do that. It's very fashion oriented. And, Anten- and Antonio himself is a little bit more sensitive and more soft. And he's not as forceful as Aaron. So those are two people who are super successful, different communication styles, different video editing styles, and different content production styles. So you need to think about what's the way I'm going to produce video and what's the way I'm going to actually teach and present myself. Now the third thing is the way you structure your videos, coming up with a systematic process to structure them. So one of the biggest things I ever did for my videos that was the most useful in saving time is actually coming up with an SOP, which is a kind of standard operating procedure. So every time I script a video, it has the same format, which allows me to have consistent quality for you, consistent editing style for me and the editors, and it's just an easier way to figure out how am I gonna teach a topic? If I wanna talk about how to improve your life, there's a million videos I could produce on that. But I know that I wanna produce a video with an introduction, a personal story that I share, and then a teaching point. And we do that in every single video. And it produces a consistently good quality video that's easy for me to script, easy to shoot and relay and teach and connect, and then it's easy for someone to edit. So figure out what is gonna be your process. Is it gonna be, you could do the same thing, I'm gonna tell a personal story and then teach. I'm just gonna tell personal stories and be vulnerable. I'm just gonna teach. I'm gonna do breakdowns. I'm gonna analyze other people's stuff. There's a lot of different ways to do it and figure out what resonates with you and what your audience likes the most. All right, guys, so that's a very basic introduction on how I would recommend getting your first 1,000 subscribers. The only other thing is you have to upload at least once a week and you need to analyze what's working and what's not working. So all of business and all of entrepreneurship, including audience growth, is really about throwing spaghetti at the wall, seeing what sticks, and then going with the things that stick. And no person can ever predict, not even the most successful business person, what will stick before they try it. So you need to make a lot of things, throw a lot of stuff at the wall, see what works, and run with it. Go where the flow is. All right, guys. Now, of course, super pumped to be launching my first business course. It's a premium business course, How I Built a Successful Business Online Using YouTube. The first link in the description has a free 30-minute podcast on how I did that. You don't need to enter your email for that, so you can listen to that. But if you want to be notified to be one of the first 50 beta members of my business course, which launches next month, add your name to that list below, because otherwise you will not hear about it. So I'm looking for 50 people that will be beta members. They'll get the course for the cheapest ever, um, and it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. It's really the, the biggest thing that I worked on in the last five years that changed my life was really becoming a successful business owner. So if that resonates, check it out. Otherwise, check out my last videos there and there.